So CIF method is uh, widely applied in different disciplines. It's surprisingly, uh, surprisingly, it was invent yeah. it's invented to solve the twin problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I. I remember when I was very small, I came across with the Gobas conjecture, yes. the statement. Yeah. Okay, not not yeah. the associated problems uh, development from uh, Jing Ren Chen. Yes, and uh, I know that till he passed away, he couldn't manage to solve the Gobas conjecture completely. But he, you know, he took the sieve method. Uh, and he, then, yeah, he yeah. did something spectacular. So what yeah. he, uh, we can even say what he did for the audience. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, so the, the beauty is, bit. what he proved is very easy right. to state, but the methods are very beautiful and very, very beautiful. difficult. And that's really what always attracts me to math is the problems are concrete, basic. The proofs might be very abstract and difficult to follow, but what you're proving is concrete. So he was trying to prove that there are infinitely many pairs of numbers, x and x plus 2, x because plus they two. differ by 2, yeah. both are prime. What he was able to prove is there are infinitely many pairs of numbers, x and x plus 2, where x is prime, and x plus 2, if it's not a prime, it has got at most two prime factors. And that's as close as you can get without proving it, because two is, if you got the 2 down to 1, you would right. have both of those prime. So he, uh, he uh, developed some methods yeah. to the absolute limit, and the last step Nobody can nobody do it. And there's a good reason nobody can do this. There's right. some very fundamental reason yeah. that stopping people. Yeah. yeah. So I think Wan uh, Yuan also, you know, play a very key, key efforts in the, you know, recently and then uh, in the last century to, to talk about this problem. But till now, still no one be able to solve this Gobas conjecture. So, so there is a huge difficulty of reducing from one plus two problem to one plus one, one problem. One plus one, so, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's exactly. So that's the right. major difficulty of uh, dealing of with that, this oh, number yes. theory problem. Uh, there, there is a very uh, in my lecture on yeah. uh, Wednesday. I'll mention this. There is another Chinese mathematician who lives in the U.S. by the name of Yitang Zhang, oh, uh, who Zhang became very famous yeah. because he was working at. Uh, some supermarket, uh, so, uh, some uh, what, I forget what the actual uh, McDonald's yeah. or something. Yeah, I mean, but he claimed something and it was correct. Yeah. And he submitted he's a not, paper. Yeah, and it was correct. Yeah. And uh, he's a wonderfully brilliant idea he had. He doesn't solve twin prime, otherwise you would know about yeah. it. We would know about it. Sure. But he shows. So it's an approximation, but Chen's is the closest to proving it. But right. he shows that there are, there's a number h, mm. which is not necessarily 2, but it's less than, say, 200. So there is a number h, so that x and x plus h are both prime infinitely often. Yeah. But he can't tell you what h is. There's some number less than a few hundred, such that x and x plus h are both prime infinitely often. So it's another kind of approximation. It's further than uh, the work of Chen, sure. in, in my view. Yeah, so I think in number theory's perspective, uh, Jing Ren Chen, uh, Yuan Wang, and also, you know, Yi Tang Zhang. Zhang. Yeah, yeah so, it's so, very popular. So they are very popular <laughs> number theorists, and uh, they make very tremendous contributions uh, to this yeah, yeah, aspect. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, let's move a bit to your personal uh, mathematical contributions in another way around, another way. So uh, as a renowned mathematician, I understand that you have participated in many, uh, you know, committees and also you have played a lot of uh, leadership roles in different societies. Uh, so how do you think this engagement or the involvement could help the collaborations and also the communication between mathematicians, not only for pure mathematicians, but also in between, you know, pure mathematicians and uh, applied or computational mathematicians, or even with computer scientists. So yeah, so uh, I've been yeah I've, I've been on committees. This is yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, a lot of committees. Yeah. Um, I think I do it mainly because I think it's very important that things are fair mm. and that uh, I like to feel that I have a nice view of what different fields contribute and that um, one can try 
So in any committee or anything like mm. that, you have to make tough decisions. Right. And so the question is how to do it when you may be comparing different fields. Yeah. And, uh, and then there are people pushing their fields and other people pushing their fields. And I like to feel that I'm a, a guy who's very fair. Who's so in the middle. Right. In the middle and uh, <laughs> try to appreciate really. But of course, prizes uh, are prizes. They are given to one person. They have to make some decision. Decisions. And, uh, committees that are different kind of committees or committees that choose speakers at the International Math um, Congress, Congress, that's very important for people's career. Yes. Again, it's an issue of fairness and honesty. And that uh, one, one doesn't want to see agendas and people pushing mm -hmm. their friends kind of thing. So maybe people have watched what I do and feel maybe that I'm a fair guy. That may be, I'm not sure what you uh, have in mind there, but cooperation in terms of, we discussed this earlier, you know, that furthering of mathematics and fields that are nearby, um, I, it, the collaboration is extremely important and um, if you have people who've had experience contributing in in, interdisciplinary in the sense of math being used in, in computer science and right. computer science being used in math, then um, that experience might help you um, see that things develop in that kind of direction mm -hmm. more, uh, more frequently. Yeah. Um, in the end, in the old days, or we keep on talking about the old days, uh, you know, someone like Gauss was called a geometer because geometer. he did everything. I mean, he did statistics, <laughs> he invented statistics, he invented geometry, invented number theory, invented probability. All right. <laughs> yeah. and, and people were not doing one thing alone. And um, I think within math, mm -hmm. I still think math is not as... It's, no, nobody can understand everything. That's completely out of the yes. question. But I still feel it's a small and united subject that uh, is we all after the same goals and we have the same uh, drive to understand the truth right. and that specialization is good but if you become too expert and you talk to nobody else it's not so good you need to down to it yeah. down to the earth ma yeah. ma and many of the greatest breakthroughs right. uh, come from interaction between two fields yeah. so if you look at the proof by Perelman of the Poincaré conjecture exactly. this came from nonlinear PDE nonlinear PDE so the people trying to do this were topologists mm. doing very beautiful algebra and topology and then came Hamilton with this idea of using nonlinear PDE Richard Hamilton who won the Shaw Prize right, right. Uh, uh, and the, he had this idea, and Perelman actually carried it out uh, brilliantly. Uh, but this idea comes, shows you that analysis, nonlinear PDE, solving mm. the central problem in geometry of three-dimensional manifolds. This is multidisciplinary. Uh, and, and but the beauty, you, you yeah. can. This is one of. This is what, why you go into math. This right. beauty cannot be compared to. There's yeah. very little else that right. mankind has provided. That's this good. <laughs> very <laughs> wonderful, ex very wonderful example of uh, how different aspects of mathematics can be combined yeah. together. Yeah, maybe we can talk about about uh, you know the modern trends of math or science even. Now nowadays, you know the use of data analytics. Uh, yeah machine learning or even artificial intelligence have become more popular and uh, you know recently they won a lot of prizes oh yes well, so, yeah. well known prizes in the, yeah in and uh, the increasing prominence of this relevant methodologies have shed light to the future trajectories and the advancement of science so from your personal perspective could you share with us a bit on your yeah, point is, of view so yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is a very important question. Yeah. Uh, is how's mathematics going to evolve given these, uh, especially machine learning uh, algorithms? I think there's no question <clears throat> that a lot of math is going to be impacted. I don't believe that the big ideas will come from there, but that's <laughs> right uh, because in the end, math is about understanding. So let me give you. Uh, 
uh, sure. uh, something similar because this, so as I said, I used to be a chess player, a very right. serious chess right. player. And I followed chess programs uh, quite closely because it's very interesting to me to see when, at what point the machine beat man. Yeah. And that was Kasparov 2000, in the year 2000. World champion was Kasparov and he was beaten by Deep Blue, yeah. which was an IBM machine. Exactly. But that didn't bother any chess player because yeah. Yeah. the program yeah. that Deep Blue was based on was based on chess theory, so it could explain to you why it beat Kasparov in that game and later it would beat anybody. But the reason was, we know why it's beating humans, because it doesn't make mistakes. On the other hand, it's doing what you tell it to do. And so if you ask, what's the best move in this position, and you ask the program at the time, right. it'll say, uh, this, this is the best move, and you'll say why, and it'll explain it to you in the way you understand it, because it was programmed by chess players and computer scientists. But then came Alpha Zero, which is a machine learning, yeah. and it'll tell you, you'll ask what's the best move, and it'll say this is the best this move, the and, best but it can't explain to you why. You'll ask what's the best response, it'll tell you what the best so response is. I think is. there is some probabilistic theory behind when they conduct the analysis, but they didn't show but they, Yeah, they have machine learning, they have some formulae, some curve right. fitting at the bottom, right. which is uh, statistically very Statistics. powerful. So, and it's enough to win, yeah. beat anybody, basically. But, and, and but beat, they didn't show us. But you don't understand anything. Yeah. So, okay, that's chess. It's a finite game. It's right. not surprising that if you had a strong enough computer, it could beat you, just like a com computer, computer will never lose yeah. it, a simple game, because it can work out all the variations. Math is infinite, so uh, we, it's going to take much longer before that kind of impact happens. But I would be very, very unhappy if there was some theorem like the Riemann hypothesis, yeah. which uh, we've mentioned, uh, which, uh, you know, he has a computer says this is correct, and you right. don't understand why it's true. Right. So math is about beauty yeah. and understanding. Mm. It's very important that when you give a lecture, that you understand what you're saying and the audience understands understand the way. what you're saying. So, yeah. Yeah. And if uh, we so, it may be come to a point where we're only interested in what the truths are and that the mm. computer's verifying this truth. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that some parts of math, if you are a pra so for the future yeah. generation, this is not for me, you'll have to be able to make good use of that technology mm. because it'll perhaps you'll experiment with it, it might even suggest to you how to proceed, you'll work with it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not expecting great ideas to come from this, sure. but I may be completely wrong. Uh, this is a very important no question. No worries. And it's not just the impact of that on mathematics, it's right. on everything. <laughs> no worries, because yeah. uh, we don't know the future, right? Yeah, we right. cannot predict the future. Yeah, it's clearly one of the yeah. things that is on everybody's mind. Many yeah. fields are going through, many fields of going... Yeah. Math, it hasn't hit pure math so yeah. quickly, but it's coming. It's coming, it's coming. approaching. Yeah, uh, certainly if there's some statistical correlations between things that... Yeah we're interested in, it might discover them before we will. And there, that makes sense. Mm. But whether it's going to help us uh, make quantum jumps in understanding yeah. of how to prove a great thing where you need a new theory, we have to wait for that. And uh, if math becomes, if, it's, if people don't understand proofs anymore, mm. then it's another subject, actually. Right. It's something else. Right. The whole point about math is, that logical yet, thinking. is logical thing, and, and you can explain to somebody else, yeah. maybe not many people, it can become very sophisticated yeah. and involved, but people then go through the same thought process and understand it. So it does seem that statistics is much mm. more relevant in the way we think than I think anybody appreciated before. So. But the future is, uh, math will be impacted. Yeah. I think some areas will be impacted, impacted. quite quickly. Right but others, like number theory, maybe yeah. much less. <laughs> I'm sure number theory wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be bombarded uh, within a short but period of time. Uh, I, let me tell you that one of the great things about number theory yeah. from the old school that we keep on returning to is that many of the greatest conjectures like the Riemann hypothesis, Riemann hypothesis. were first discovered numerically, experimentally. Exactly. exactly. So the concrete and the fact that you can use a computer to check something mm -hmm. might be true, not to prove it, but to 
experimentation. Uh, we were talking before we started here how we both are admirers of Peter Lax, yeah. who was a great mathematician and a numerical analyst and everything. He once told me that if Gauss were alive, and this was 20, 30 years ago, right. he would be a hacker <laughs> because he would not be able to go away from his computer because sure. he'd want to see what the answers are because right. he was doing it by hand. He was doing it by hand. Yeah. And he Very could have talented. just, now he just said, all right, let's see what this is. Let's see what that is. So yeah. he claims he would have been the world's best hacker, yeah. but I think uh, he would not be able to pull himself away from a sure. computer. Yeah. So uh, that, the way math evolves is it's very concrete and people check examples and the computer can help you with that.